Good morning people. Today's walk's gonna be the Lowe's Waterfalls, five wine rights, around nine miles, six to seven hours, and about a thousand meters of ascent. Forecast today is actually snow. You can just see grass more behind me. It's cleared, but this morning it was covered in clouds. It is meant to be better towards the afternoon, so hopefully it stays like this. And our first one of the day is there, right in front of us, Melbury. From what I've read, it's a tough ascent straight up in the 500s and a bit of a scree path. So you can see the path split in the middle. It is asking us to go left up the scree path. Yeah, left's better. So about it at the scree path, as you can see, quite direct. It is absolutely freezing, but I'm sweating from coming up there. That's a steep start, man. But uh, yeah, we're gonna tackle the left side, as they're suggesting. Just stay on this side. As you can probably tell, it's very slippy coming up here. So bear that in mind in bad weather. It's, it's dodgy, man. And get yourself a hiking pole if you can. Helps out big time. You see a couple of people at the bottom of session. start to pick up a bit, just a bit more exposed. See Crumach below, there's a little viewpoint here. Snow on the tops of the mountains. off that scree path and stuff we're on like a bit of a plateau the melbourne summits a bit further on as you can see coming up that face then up the scree and stuff try and do it in clear weather bits of it were exposed and it's better to see where you're going and a lot of the rocks smooth and quite slippy and even up here now it's very muddy so just just take your time be careful if you're up here yeah yeah that's the main summit over there Melbrick Summit, apparently it's got two, a south and a north top. The main one's over there somewhere. We've got to drop down and send back up. We've got another little one here, another little cairn. Oh yeah, what's that? <laughs> Sick. There's another little cairn. 
main ones in the distance there somewhere. Can't actually see it yet. So beautiful here though. Ah, so the two people who we see at the bottom have actually come round, circled round. They mustn't have fancied that climb up because they've come round. But it's definitely worth doing that route anyway. Get yourself on the other cairn. Break 512 meters, the official summit. You can see where we ascended this morning, the distance where we came up, and that's where the other summit is. And this is the main one, it's just come up on my GPS. You have views over the bottom here, uh, Belter. Unreal, this man got lucky with this weather forecast here. First one of the day down, four more left. We're heading over there in a minute to Hencombe over that side but there's a big drop off and then it looks like we're skating over them ones and the route down we've got to go back on ourselves a bit but people have said the Marshall route you're basically going direct looking at the pass there's not many ways up there from this side so just gonna have to go for it apart from it being boggy at least the views are unreal like look at that behind grass more <sighs> class mate quality and that bottom here love bottom here man So we're basically heading down now on a path. He had asked us to come off, but I've come back onto this path as that didn't look inviting. And we're basically going down to that river and ascending directly up the side. Looks like there's a bit of a path there that's not listed, but you can see people have walked there. So we're gonna go that way. Quite steep coming down before we get down to the river. You see a couple of people walking here. There's actually a path that runs all the way down from Lowe's Water to bottom here. When we done the bottom here marathon we had to pass through this part of the valley and it's dead boggy down there but this path runs all the way around and uh, someone actually on the summer of Hencombe in front of us. So we're basically down to the floor now and it actually doesn't look bad this ascent. We're just going to follow that fence line in front of us straight up. Looks like it's been ascended before. So you can actually see even though it's not listed there is a path there's a guy coming down it. So this looks doable. Bit, uh, bit boggy down this section but uh, it doesn't look too bad and to be fair when you're at the base of it it's not actually that high so you can see foot marks down there went on there <laughs> it's a nice little easy way to cross oh wet here very wet <laughs> that's not good that stuff Yeah, what have we got? Fly straight across that rock there. Oh, nearly went. Just watch that rock, it's quite wobbly. Yeah, don't even need to go on a big one. Just jump it. Fly across that. There you go. <laughs> Actually successful this week with that one for Dom. <laughs> so there is a path coming down, this guy's just passed us then. Probably worth jumping the fence as the path starts to disappear. And um, you can just see ahead by the rocks there's reminiscence of a path, so we're gonna go up that way. So yeah, we've actually come up the hill, there's quite a few paths, although not listed, you can find your way up here. We're just circling round onto the proper path now and then rather than heading straight up. So we're back on an OS path and the summit's literally just up there. So 
I think is a bit of a better idea just following them little fine paths rather than going up directly. Coming up to the summit now. Some views. That looks fantastic over here on Grassmoor. It's white now though man. You can see Eel Crag behind Grassmoor covered. Weather couldn't have been any better. We've had a bit of wind sending Melbrake, but apart from that, being sand, nice and cool, the temperature. <laughs> Hencomb, 509 meters, second one of the day. You see where we've come off there, Melbrake. That's the first summer and the proper ones there. Decent little mountain, good views. She over towards Buttermere there. Melter man. Smoke too soon about a wind there. It's picked up big time and it's freezing now. So we're heading down a bit and then back up. Major water here, having to walk across the little planks in there. Very, very boggy this area. Get your Gore-Tex boots on. So we followed the path down from Hencomb to this fence line and you can see the pack goes straight up to the summit but bear in mind it's very very wet it's been a slog that man just slow through that boggy stuff and then grass coming up but we're just up by the summit now i think it might be right in front of us there yeah it is that's most of the ascent done for the day before you hit the last two. It's a little, only a little bit of up and down now left. So there's the summer cairn just over the other side of the fence. Gravel fell, 526 metres, third one of the day, just over four hours in and five and a half miles. Decent little fell this. You can see where we was this morning, where we ascended on the left of Melbury and then over and then dropped down up and then down again. But a little decent fell, nice views of the coast. You can actually see Scotland there. Looks like it's raining bad. Just took a quick lunch break and it's directly over to the last two in the distance. So we're actually descending a lot more than I thought we was. Not major like but it's dropping down a bit and the summer of the next one's on top of there. This section here going up to this next fell is just water. Yeah, where them sheep are, you've got to jump over onto a proper path though in a second. Oh my god, she went down a hole. Away and then went through the Yeah, it's bad this. Just going to stay on the right side, as you can see, there's a path running up here as well. It's all good. Both sides. Perhaps cross this fence here, aren't we? Reckon, makes sense, doesn't it? Summit's on the left side, I think. Fell, 
173 meters. A little shelter here by the looks of it. It's looking in the way, right? Book then. It was like a pile of stones with something sticking out of it, but must have changed. But this is the summit, like. So maybe people have just built it up. Made like a little shelter, but some nice views around here. And another one in the bag. Four down, one more to go. It's been all right. We're going to get it bad at rain in a minute, though, by the looks of it. So I've just got to crack on now. Get a, oh, it's snow. I can see snow falling. So you can see that snowstorm rolling in. I must did say it was going to snow today, but earlier on, so we've actually dodged this all day. So now we're just heading to our last of the day. In a distance, should be over there fairly quick. And just see, there's clusters of this snow coming in now. It's only very light, but you can see on the biggies, it's sticking over there a bit. Winter's nearly over as well. Can't underestimate it though. So just looking at the GPS then, and we originally thought this was our last summer here, and I could see on the elevation profile we were going no higher, and that is actually called Carling Knot. And we're over there, I think the summit's just ahead, I can see something where them clouds are. Just trudging through this heather and moss. Talking too much and ends up walking towards the wrong fell there. We should have actually took a path to the left. Can you just see the final summit of the day? A couple of minutes away. So on the way in right book, it's actually listed as a stick type thing, so I don't know whether that's the summer. But there you go. And built a little cairn here anyway. Burnbank fell, 475 metres. Final Wayne right of the day, five more in the bag. Wayne Wright has actually said that the picture in the book was Actually looks like that, so I don't know whether that's the summit, but obviously we built a lot of cairn here. In a bit of a snowstorm now, but it's clearing up. Couldn't have asked for better weather, if I'm honest. Considering the forecast was meant to be a lot worse, but it's been a good walk, man. Look at that, man. Sun's just come out while we're standing here. And everywhere's clearing up. We've got to head this way back to the car and descend down. Ah, oh, look at that man, even cleared up over Scotland there. Wow. Boss that, innit? Considering we've just been in that day, <laughs> we can't see anything. <laughs> and now Scotland's appeared. But the GPS reckons we've got two and a half miles remaining, round an hour. Some nice little wild swimming spots here. Or oh, little fairy pools, whatever you call them. Nice, man. Mm -hmm. And all it is, like a little jacuzzi. Be nice and cold. <laughs> Mate, how good is that? That is quality. Oh, how good that looks, man. <sighs> nice. <sighs> Sick, man.
right people the lows waterfalls let's get to it shoulder parking for this one fairly simple if you search the kirk style in which is here there's a pub with a car park but i parked just up the road here on the corner just see three cars there i'll explain why so as you can see plenty of room for a few cars and there's your first fell there melbreak good little parking spot when i got there there was a car already parked there but i think most people will prefer to park in the pub but i parked there with it being free so it's basically near enough the same place anyway so in the summer it might fill up but you can park in the kirk starling car park instead so as you can see there's where i parked that car park is for the church so i'm not sure about that one but you can park at the kirk style instead and start the route there and you can see behind it melbreak again but what i did notice i went for a pint when i finished the walk in the kirk style and um, when i pulled in there's a sign here so the sign basically says parking for patrons only and obviously i got there fairly early in the morning so that's why i parked up the road just in case anyone said anything but you know you could park there and maybe just say you're going to go in for a drink at the end of the walk or whatever it's up to you plenty of options though and nice and easy parking and the walk basically starts just past the kirk style through here so let's get to the route as i said there's where i parked on the corner of that road and the kirk style pub is here at the lowes water hotel so take your choice and as you can see they all end within a couple of minutes for jura you basically head from the start over a bit of a bridge and follow a road before you go through a little small forest here and then start making your way up to the first one you're ascending up a big scree path up to melbrake as it's got two summits the first one's in just over 500 meters so you can see how much you've got to go up the scree is very loose so the paths aren't the best i'd recommend definitely taking a hiking pole because with it having a big incline you do lose your footing at points and with it being quite slippy the scree so there's parts on the scramble that do have a lot of exposure and it would be dangerous in bad weather and it's better to see where you're going try and do it on a dry day but melbreak has two summits this is the first one the north summit at 509 meters what i did notice we've seen people at the bottom of the scree path looking up i think they were assessing whether they fancied it or not and they ended up turning here and following this path and as you can see that path leads up to melbreak's official summit which is down here at 512 meters if you didn't fancy the scramble you can just completely avoid it and come down this path that is a bit of a steep path up but there's no scramble it's just a proper walking path when you've completed the scramble you pass the first summit and then you carry on through here quite boggy in points before you get to the official summit of melbreak at 512 meters and yeah melbreak summit you got some good views into bottom here from there as well i did notice on the gps the route from melbreak to hencombe was actually asking us to go sort of directly down but didn't fancy that thought not doing that again so we returned back on the path here till we could find a path down towards the river you can see here at this point you're at 447 meters so getting down to the river that is a steep path down and again the hiking poles helped a lot it's a it's more of a grassy path and has bits of scree and you can see here there is a path towards the river but nothing was listed from this point up to hencombe the route has asked us to basically skirt up to hencombe diagonally but we preferred to go up here and join the main path so you can see on the outdoor active there is a path listed to the bottom of the fence line and you can see here there's nothing listed but we was gonna originally just follow the fence line here you would have seen on the video when we were crossing the river you could see a guy descending down towards us and he although it's not listed there is paths going up there so it's actually fine just if you stick near the fence line you can see the path clearly and then we just joined onto this main path up to hencombe to be fair the route over there is fine and then yeah hencombe again views over towards bottom here decent little one so coming off hencombe here 
you can actually see on the ordnance survey there's not a path listed i mentioned it in the previous video that i've been cycling between maps and you can see here on the outdoor active there is actually a path listed but coming off here to here you come down quite a lot and this section is just there's water everywhere make sure you're wearing some gore-tex footwear not the greatest thing in the world if you would have seen on the video as well i actually had to cross planks of wood cross a part of it because the bog was so bad so we ended up just following this path and then we just cut across and then joined back onto another path up to gavel fell you've got a short ascent up really good fell lad the views surrounding the areas are a class to be honest I, I enjoyed that fell and at that stage we grabbed a bit of lunch before heading over to blake fell nice three forwards one just stick to the fence line and there's a nice path running down and you can see here different view from the ordnance survey outdoor actors got paths listed some parts over towards blake fell low around this area very boggy again we ended up skating away a bit because there was so much water and it's quite deep to be honest once you've followed that fence line to this bog you hit another part of the fence line where we had to jump over nice and straightforward decent path up there more of a grass path again blake fell was like more of a summer shelter I had, look, had a little look on a Wainwright book and it was a cairn at one point from what I could see. So from what I've gathered now, it's now a summer shelter, but it's quite cool, I felt. Actually walked around here and had a little look and you can see this Cogra Moss below. And you can see over into the distance towards Scotland and stuff, but decent little fella. I enjoyed that one. From Blake Fell, we thought originally here Carling Knot was the last fella of the day. As we were heading down and noticed on the GPS, we wasn't actually going there. I think that's a baker or an outline fell, but that looks like it would have been a really good fell, that, to be honest, and probably tackle that in the future, but we were actually heading over to Burn Bank fell. You can actually see here, I was, that's where exactly where I was heading until I realised that wasn't the fell. So rather than going back, we just cut across the header here, but we should have come off Blake fell and went straight down this path here and basically it's like a fence line just running up to Bearbank fell and in the wainwright book Bearbank fell is like an old metal fence post there was an actual cairn there but i think the old rusty fence post was the original summit but the next widget anyway good little finish to the day that one i like the unusual fells to be honest and then basically heading back your car you get to this stage and this drop off down to holmbeck that is fairly steep man so you've got to be careful coming down there it's more of a grassy path and there's a fence running down and i'm not joking it's like that going down just take your time and then basically you hit this river you would have seen some of those pools you see people on instagram in them and there's little deep parts of water you can go and sit in. Be quite good in the summer if you're into all that wild swimming and that. And uh, yeah, pass through Homewood. There's a diagonal path basically running down to Lowe's Water. Worth a little look on your way past Boss there, mate. You head across a bit of land before you head back to your car. And as you can see, just after Maggie's Bridge, we hit the road. And if you were parking at the pub, you'd just carry on down there. But obviously we went this way to the phone box where we were parked. And there's a bit of a zoomed out view on the other map. Nice and straightforward of them on, it's just a big circular. Quick look at the stats. You can see the elevation profile there going up Melbrake. Steep man, steep. And then the drop off. Track distance 10.1 miles. And 6 hours and 32 minutes in total. Although we were only moving for 4 hours and 47. We did take a few breaks on that. But yeah, really good route that one, I enjoyed that. Although it was boggy in part, it was actually a really decent route. And I did love the scramble at the start up to Melbrake. But as I can say, there's, there's various ways you can go up there if you don't fancy the scrambling. And yeah, good little day and five more Wainwrights. As always, people, anything relevant will be linked in the description below. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.